Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Therott and Mary Jo Foley. Episode 624, recorded Wednesday, June 5th, 2019, Axebox. Windows Weekly is brought to you by Atlassian. Atlassian software powers the full spectrum of collaboration between IT teams and the rest of your organization. Visit Atlassian.com slash IT to see what IT can be by giving their products a try for free. And by WordPress. Turn your dreams into reality and launch your website at WordPress.com. Get 15% off any new plan at WordPress.com slash Windows. And by Captera. Find the right tools to make an informed software decision for your business. Captera is software selection simplified. Visit Captera's free website at captera.com slash windows. It's time for Windows Weekly, the show where we cover the latest news from Redmond. And today we cover the latest news from, news from Wacht, Wacht, Wacht in the Netherlands. Paul Therat and Mary Jo Foley <laughs> in Holland. <laughs> tonight hello guys hello hey. i have a really crappy connection are you having fun do you that's all right you know what you're on hotel wi-fi it's after <laughs> dinner uh everybody's yep. breaking out the bolts and you're gonna be you're gonna be uh, it's gonna be a party in that hotel <laughs> if only i wasn't a mile from it i could enjoy that oh you're not in the hotel oh i'm in the hotel but the hotel is a vast complex of buildings oh okay okay it is well uh even from here i can smell your axe battle spray <laughs> <sighs> no leo that's my my xbox battle spray xbox, as we'll discuss later xbox branded battle spray <laughs> yep. yeah. um but let's start with where you are and why you're there because <laughs> I, I inquiring <laughs> minds wish to know uh, we are in Vocht in the Netherlands, about an hour outside of Amsterdam. Uh -huh. And the reason we're here is tomorrow we're going to be at Experts Live NL, a big conference for all kinds of Microsoft experts oh, in the Netherlands. Nice. Seems like you go to Holland a lot. Is there a reason? Yes. Because <laughs> it's awesome? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's I'm not going out because where... of Norwegian air. <laughs> oh, is that how you flew we out? Rough, we had a rough little flight last night. Oh, man. You flew I out of had... Norwegian air? No, Paul didn't flight. have a rough little flight. Paul had a great flight. Where did you fly, Paul? Norwegian air. But I was in the premium section of the plane, Leo. Oh, you had miles. Or did As you guys flip my for daughter. it? No, I, I I bid on a seat and I got like I just lowballed it and got the seat. Nice, nice, well done. Prestige was the phrase. Uh, prestige, no, um, privilege has its privileges. Privilege has its privileges. It's tautological, <laughs> right. but it's and me true. Being, yeah. Me and, being cheap, I said no, I'm not bidding for it. And then I waited two hours in the check-in line <sighs> and 45 minutes uh, in the security line. Uh, I was basically drunk by the time she got to the bar. You were. You were. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, it all sounded so good from a distance. It sounded so it did. exotic and jet settery and yeah. fun. I fun, know. Fun. It was actually on my on my Twitter account. I uh, sorry, my Instagram account. I have a picture of the crowd that was in front of the Norwegian check-in center, and it was very strange. I took the picture, I posted it, and Mary Jo and I were kind of texting each other, and I looked up and and through the crowd. I, I could see her little face in there, like in a mosh pit, <laughs> you know? Yep. I was sea, in a mosh pit. In a sea of people begging to be yep. released. Oh, I'm yes. so sorry. Well, you're here now. Made it. Yeah. And uh, yep. having a great time, I have a feeling. Are you going to do a meetup in Vogt? <sighs> we don't have time. Uh, this is actually don't. super quick. Oh, okay. In and out. Yeah, yep. we have another show to go to next week, unfortunately. So where are you going next week? We're to Washington D.C. <sighs> oh wow! Yeah, Should Mary we... Jo, are you going to have a premium seat for that flight? I'm taking Amtrak on that, so it'll definitely be less horrible. 
Yeah, that'll be good. <laughs> yeah. You are in uh, what Elsevier named the best place to live in, in Holland once. Really? Oh, really? Yeah. Was that before World War II, or uh, what, what do you mean? Was not a good place to live in World War II. In fact, kind of a notorious right, uh, right. concentration camp. Quite. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think we're actually. I think that's where we're staying. You're staying um, at. Oh, good. So, yeah. <laughs> oh boy. It's. Oh, sorry. Yikes. Um, yeah. yeah. So, um, did you get to see any of the uh, WWDC events on Monday? Yes. Mm -hmm. We did. We did. Actually, do you care? I should I, you say know what I thought was really weird was that. Uh, how much they highlighted Microsoft's Minecraft. Yeah. Like, yeah. So Microsoft actually played a fairly big role in the keynote and I don't believe was mentioned even once. Is that weird? Which I thought was kind of interesting. Well, where right? else so besides the three Minecraft? Things, yeah, so, how about uh, those two Word play... windows snapped side by side? Yeah. Right. So Enterprise-y. When, when, <laughs> when Apple did the... Uh, iPad OS demo, there was only one third party app that was on that guy's uh, home screen and was demoed. And that one app was Microsoft Word. Yeah. It was the only one. The rest of it was all inbox Apple, app, uh, Apple apps. Isn't that weird? The other one was the uh, Xbox controller support for TV OS, although, by the way, it's also supported on iOS, which I thought was kind of interesting. Yeah, but also the PlayStation. And controller so yeah but of course right but yeah. that's fine i mean uh, you know uh those are obviously the two big ones so that's yep, great yeah yeah and then um and then of course the minecraft thing which i i think was the best part of the whole show totally agree with you i thought it was even better than the hall lens version <laughs> yeah right, well, by the way i, I i've said yeah. this to other people but if you if you watch that demo um look at the faces of the two presenters when they finish it up they are the definition of bliss they they were having they fun clearly, uh, clearly, yeah they were loving they it clearly uh, it also, could have been partially because like, it, it, yeah, it worked <laughs> right no no that's part of it that's by the way i think that's part of it yeah. but i also think part of it is just they it was awesome <laughs> you know like that I, clearly they thought that what they were doing was really cool and i think that kind of showed through it was really neat so I have to say this, I was telling Paul this on our way over here. This is the first Apple keynote I've watched in um, at least 10 years and maybe longer. Oh, you are a loyal and the only Windows reason, person. That's nice. No, you know, because I don't really care about Apple, right. as you know, and it doesn't really have a bearing on my world. But right before the keynote started, a rumor started going around the Microsoft watching camp saying there's going to be a big Microsoft piece of this. And so I'm like, right. oh, I guess I got to watch this. Uh, okay, well, yeah, hopefully it's going to be something I care about. And, you know, I, I wasn't sad I saw the Minecraft demo because it was cool. But I was kind of hoping it was going to be something. Were you sad that you had to sit through two hours to get to it? <laughs> yes. Because it was uh, oh. literally at the two-hour point. Oh. At the point where they yeah. were talking about makeup on emo and emojis, I was like, all right, it's time to start drinking beer. That I don't even a, know what time That was made. a nightmare moment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god yeah very i was apple. like okay well yeah i forgot i forgot what apple keynotes are like but it was good that i watched it because it gives me better perspective when microsoft does things that are like emoji and all the things they care about around the consumer space because i'm like okay i get what they're trying to do but yeah all, all of the <clears throat> sorry <clears throat> a little dry here um all of these shows are these keynotes are in their own way kind of terrible, you know. It's it's kind of instructive because I think when we uh, watch the Microsoft stuff, we can be a little critical of the mistakes, or some of the the really long, boring, bad parts, whatever. But you know, Apple has those moments too. Yeah, I love the enterprisey comment though when he when he did what in Windows Eight was called snapping two windows side by side, and they were both Word. Uh, he was like, "Yeah, that's enterprisey, isn't it?" <laughs> I, I was like, I "Okay, that's that. the whole that's the whole extent of <laughs> yeah. the enterprise he, content yeah. of this keynote." <laughs> I, I, I he think, literally moved right on from there. There yeah. is a there is a reason why they might have uh, wanted to highlight Microsoft. It turns out I was talking to a developer yesterday that the ability to do that requires some effort on the part of the developer. It's that's not, right. Yeah, it's not automatic, right. and so. Uh, yep. 
I think Apple, of course, will have all of its apps or most of its apps capable of it. But the fact that Microsoft already has it, uh, I think yeah. Apple, without saying so, is is saying thank you, Microsoft, for uh, making your touch first version of Office. You know, by the way, though, from, from a from a user perspective, though, and anyone who uses an iPad uh, Pro, especially, I guess, would would should acknowledge this. Um, that's the problem with this feature, right? You never know when you go to a new app if it's going to support it at all, if it's going to support it partially, um, and that's a it's a goofy problem with that platform right now. The side by side stuff. Oh things. God, yes. Um, but at least they're doing it. I, I didn't realize that it was a, a non-trivial thing for the developer to do. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. but yeah. but you know that sounds to me then like Microsoft. The Apple went to Microsoft, said we'd like you to support this, and they worked with them to get it working. So that's uh, I, that's the that's the yeah, I don't know that's who, where we are now. Yeah, yeah. I mean the, the 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 Microsoft Office apps on iPad have long supported that functionality. Um, oh, they have. I know they improved it. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. This isn't new to iOS 13. Oh, um, but app, what Apple did is, is in iOS 13 they updated that functionality. So right. I'm sure Microsoft was one of the first ones to get on board with it Got because it. they've been doing it all along. Like they, you know, this uh, you know uh, for productivity apps on the iPad, like this is super important. Yeah, well, it's this thing of opening two of the same two panes of the same program at the same time that's new to iOS yeah. 13, and that's actually a big deal. If you wanted to get anything done, uh, yeah, you, you might want to do that. You know, you might want to have one out no, out one note note in one pane and one out one note note in the other pane, or yes, you, know, so you can copy and paste all kinds of things like that. So, yep. I think that's a nice feature, and it's very enterprisey. It is enterprise. It is. It's <laughs> exactly what you know, we call You know what's funny, though? I, I never could get Snap to work on Windows 10. I knew how to do it. I, I had read how to do it, and I never could get it to work right. It was just so hard for me to snap Windows side by side, and so I never do it to this day. Mary Jo, this is the time I for know. an online learning video. It's, this is, it's the easiest <laughs> looked, thing in the world. I've looked at these. No, it's not. It's not intuitive, no, it and it's just easier. It's no. It's you know what? It's easier to just have floating windows. It is. Oh my God, Mary Jo. <laughs> this is Sorry. Listen, this is all you Sorry. need to know. Windows key plus arrow keys. <laughs> I don't use those though. I I do everything without can. special keys. I know. Oh, Mary Jo. You can also. <laughs> I hate gestures. I hate gestures, and I hate special keys. <laughs> How do you feel about fluent design elements? Oh, please stop it now! Uh, this is, don't, now you've gone focused too far. Inbox, Let's not so go you're there. Kind of a <laughs> <laughs> Rounded corners and stuff. I don't know. I don't have an opinion. Now the Microsoft game they showed, which is called Microsoft Earth, that's not the same as the Microsoft AR game. That the it Mi is. Minecraft that's Earth. it. That um, Minecraft. Yep. It's the same, but yep. different. Yeah, that's the one. Oh, okay. The one where the, where the just, girl is skateboarding around and making stuff? Yep. That's the same game. They just showed it before yep. with Android, right? That was the first way they showed it. And right. this is the first time they showed it on iOS. Nice. It did. A, it worked it really great. well. Occlusion and uh, placing and all of that really seemed to work quite well. Yep. I do have now, to say, back, though, in the long run, no one wants to hold their phone up to their eye all the time. I mean, right. oh, this is waiting for... This is waiting for glasses. It's all guys. about glasses. This, uh, it's all about getting. You know, right. Apple's yeah. coming out with glasses. This yeah. is happening. Yeah, they're just conditioning us to say, "God, there's got to be a better way." Well, yep. as a matter of fact, yep. they're going to solve it. For yep, us. we have solved it. Remember, uh, four and a half years ago, almost, we saw Hololens for the first time, and there was the stage demo that they did. And then they took us into rooms later on and and made us go through various demos, and some of them were productivity focus some of them were about learning type things remember there was a thing about rewiring an electrical switch with the guy and the skype window and so forth but i think the funnest demo the coolest demo was essentially what we just saw it was a hall a um a minecraft demo right and in that room you had a minecraft castle on a table and you had a minecraft hole in the wall that bats would fly out of and you could walk around each and, and kind of look at them in 3d space with the hall lens on and it was really rather incredible and you know, at that time, they weren't sure if HoloLens might uh, develop into a consumer product or whatever, but it was just a neat and obvious demo, graphical demo to do for that device. And, and here it is happening in real life, on, you know, not with the HoloLens, of course, but uh, in uh, other AR-capable devices. 
They didn't mention Azure Spatial Anchors, so I felt a little deflated. I but. did. You'd be glad if you if you had been watching it on our stream. I immediately <laughs> pointed out that they were using Azure Spatial Anchors. Also didn't nice. mention Microsoft. I'm yeah. relatively right. sure that they exactly. didn't Microsoft. It's really strange, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I thought that I was weird. Yeah, That was weird. But uh, anybody who's paying attention knew what was going on, that there was a lot of Microsoft in there. And, uh, yeah, and it's interesting. I mean, Microsoft obviously, could, you know, participated, I would say, mm -hmm. right? They must have had engineers. Well, Mojang is owned by Microsoft. I mean, those were two yeah, Microsoft yeah, but I mean, employees. On you day. think Microsoft had nothing to do with the presentation? No, I think they must have been people. Oh, that's right. They were Mojang employees, so they were Microsofties. Right. Yeah, yeah. 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 But I bet on the word part, I, I bet on the word part, Microsoft didn't have to have anything to do with that. Well, other than, I guess, support it early. Making it work. And, yeah. And but I mean, yeah. 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 Apple, code, yeah. yeah. You know how these things are, though. When you have an event like that, there's there's people backstage. There's engineers backstage. Yeah, yeah. I'm right. a little in surprised cases, there wasn't. You know, case, yeah. I'm surprised there weren't more third-party app demos, frankly. And uh, that tells me that they probably planned on it and they just weren't ready. I, I think Adobe maybe, would have been an obvious choice. I think the other thing is this was two hours and 15 minutes of, and it was jam-packed, much more so than usual. My, Apple had a lot to say and a lot of right, many right. more new things to talk about than ever before. So you're right. They often like yeah, to have third parties on stage, but honestly, uh, I think they were really... Oh, no, I don't mean I don't mean having a third party on stage. I mean just having the apps. I mean... Oh, I see. It... it they spent a ton of time right after that demo on notes, you know, and it's like, geez, I mean, could you imagine Microsoft spending any time on a stage anywhere talking about OneNote for any amount of time? Right. Um, it's no. kind of ludicrous. It's like, an Apple tradition. A of time. It's an Apple tradition. Uh, I remember when they had the new uh, postcards app, which they quickly killed. Uh, clips, mm -hmm. which is still around, but one would never know it. They like to show <laughs> the apps that they're developing in house. For some reason, they often spend a long time on sometimes very inconsequential apps. That's a that's an Apple right. thing to do. I don't I don't mm -hmm. I'm not sure why, but it is. Mm -hmm. uh, how about uh, iTunes? Because you uh, you know one of the things people are pointing out, Apple's deprecating iTunes in favor of three new apps: music. TV and podcasts. Thank you, Microsoft. Right. Remember, thank right, you, Apple. Right, right. But they're not doing that on <laughs> Windows. It's uh, if you're an iPhone user synchronizing with Windows, you're still going to be using the old iTunes. Yeah, are you, are, are you guys familiar with the TV show and or the comic book series, The Walking Dead? <laughs> yes. <laughs> right, the reason I ask, I actually, this is actually slightly witty um, <laughs> in the book, and I I don't know that they did this on the TV show, but in the books. One of the characters explains when they find out that the the virus that causes people to be reanimated as zombies yeah. is present in everybody, and that means that mm. anyone who dies is going to turn into a zombie. And the title "The Walking Dead" does not refer to the zombies; it refers to the humans who are survivors. They're the Walking Dead ah. because it's right. Seems, so yeah. that's what iTunes is on Windows. <laughs> the it's, Walking uh, Dead. Yeah. Yeah, it's not going to change. Um, at least, you know, not that they've said um, it, we're going to be stuck with it for a while. So they're going to have separate apps on Mac. They already have separate apps on iOS and on uh, tvOS, and um, that's how they treat us. <laughs> so, you know, get used to it, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they did that with QuickTime. Remember, they they kept Quick, QuickTime around. In fact, Safari. you had yeah Safari, right? Yeah, Safari. Remember they had that Apple. Yeah. software installer that would periodically pop yep. up and you go what is this i want to mm -hmm. update all your apple software on your you windows virtually <laughs> yeah yeah so here's how apple works just in case anyone's unclear on this um they don't want to put their software on other platforms ever and they only do it when they absolutely have to so something like apple music which they see as strategic they made for android uh, that's the only way they can complete uh, compete fully with spotify uh, it's interesting to me that Apple TV is not on Android, even though they're putting it on a bunch of other platforms. Yeah, it's on um, Samsung. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, this this is Apple. So um, in the same way that Apple will drop you as a partner uh, as soon as they can, um, because they've replicated what you're doing and can do it in-house, um, they'll drop these other platforms as soon as they can, too. So when iTunes went on Windows, whatever year that was, 2002 or 2003, I'd imagine, um, it was a necessity. Windows was personal computing. You know, for, for iTunes and for the iPod to be successful, it had to be in Windows. Today, uh, we use phones for music. And um, 
we don't not not many people are watching iTunes movies on PCs, I would imagine. And so I'm sure from their perspective. It's yeah, odd because can, they really can. are focusing on making more money on all of those things, but I guess uh, they don't mm -hmm. they don't mind if Windows people. So here's a statistic for you. Um, <laughs> we know that there are 200, I'm sorry, there are t 1 billion iOS devices in the world. We also know that there are 100 million Macs in the world. That means that there are, all, are absolutely, definitely, without a doubt, more people using an iOS device who also use a Windows PC than right. there are. Right. Using an iOS device with ninety percent, if my math is correct. Hmm. <laughs> it's uh, yeah, there are fifteen times as many PCs in the world as there are Macs. Fifteen times. I'm sure people so, go into the meetings at Apple and say things like this. They was like pulling yep. teeth to get Jobs to do uh, iTunes for Windows. He did not want to do it. Finally, was convinced. To, and it turned out to be a big, big deal. It was it made the iPod the hit it was, and yet they seem to have yep. forgotten that. But I think you know this is where like these kind of raw numbers kind of fail us because the truth is um, those people that numbers those bigger numbers on Windows are probably not particularly enthusiastic Apple fans, right? If they were, they'd be buying Macs. Um, right. right. And obviously, the bigger push for Apple's to get those people into their ecosystem as fully as possible. And that's, in this small way, yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. when the better apps are available on the Mac, that's a selling point. It may be something that pushes people over the edge in the future right. to switch platforms. And you know, there's no reason not to, with Satya Nadella being so nice and friendly to the Apple know. OSs. <laughs> why push? <laughs> you know, why not, why why not push? Why not, why you know, the yep. en the enemy yep. isn't doing anything about it. That's right. You've, that and used to won't. drive you crazy with the I'm a Mac, I'm a PC ads. You said, why doesn't yeah, Microsoft totally. fire back? Why don't they fire back? I know. Oh, it, took yeah. them, it took them almost two years to respond yeah. to that. And, and does everyone remember what they responded with? The Mojave experiment. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then eventually they came up with I'm a PC. But first it was the Mojave experiment. Yeah. Go back, uh, go, go, go read up on that, kids. Uh, check yeah, yeah, exactly. Check, I actually thought, right? check I thought that library. was a great idea when they did it, I have to admit. It was a great idea until we yep. found out that it was kind of fudged, right? Didn't they, weren't the results? No, kind so of, they, they went no. up to people and they said, hey, here's a new version. Look at this. And right. it was just Windows, right? Right. It was just Vista. So the, the, the complaint at the time was that Vista, no one liked Vista. It was big, heavy, slow, blah, 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 whatever. So people, Microsoft would go up to people right. on the street and say, hey, you know, we heard everyone complaining about Vista. So here's the thing that's going to come next. We're going to fix all the problems. Yeah. Call it Windows we Modern. We what you thought. Yeah. And they just showed right. them Vista. And the, everyone was like, oh, my God, this is fantastic. <laughs> like, right. Yep. That, right. It was fine. There was nothing really that wrong with it. Um, he just proves yeah, you at least, get uh, people to say anything if you have a camera in their face. <laughs> or the people don't know what they're looking they at. They don't know right? what people don't know. You know, Jay Leno's yeah. made a lot of. Made a lot of hay yeah. going out into the street and asking right. people questions. Exactly. Way, so for whatever it's worth, one of the big memories I have about Vista is I had uh, whatever um, desktop wallpaper. My, I was running it on um, like one of those white MacBooks at the time. And someone came over and said, oh, the, the, they said, uh, you know, the, they looked at it and said something like, this is why the Mac is so much better than the PC. Look how awesome that looks. And I was like, "That's Windows." <laughs> that is <laughs> now that is funny. That, that, that's, that's, that's Windows. Funny. <laughs> that happens yeah. in Windows. <laughs> it was Vista. That's very funny. That's um, awesome. Let's take a break, and then we're going to talk about new from Maybelline Tech Lash. But mm, you bet. but uh, we will have to pause for a moment. Paul Thorat, Mary Jo Foley, they're in the Netherlands in Vught. Actually, I found the pronunciation. You want to hear it? This is for, this is yeah. Vught. Vught. Uh, that's not coming out of my play. I'm sorry. <laughs> so that's it's like you got a hair and you kind of cough it out a little bit. Dutch is such a it's a beautiful language when you hear people speaking it. It's very um, it's hard to describe, but it's very uh, loopy. It's very pretty, but um, sometimes yeah. there's many more consonants than any one word deserves. It's, it's, it's a slightly and there's a lot of apostrophes. Yeah, yeah, it's Lowland German. Yeah. Our show today brought to you by those fine folks at Atlassian. If you're an IT professional, you are, congratulations, first of all. You picked a good career. <laughs> well done. 
uh, IT professionals are not only in demand, they're in the hot seat these days, right? It's the, you're the center of the cloud-based world. And when you're at the center of all those mission-critical operations, there's a few things that are kind of important. The ability to plan and execute agilely, rapidly, get the job done, to collaborate with your fellow IT professionals, but also communicate with colleagues and clients and the boss. Uh, these things are important. They become more and more important as the cloud becomes more important. And I want to point you in a really good direction for software to make your job easier, Atlassian. You know, I think we, I think a lot of people know Atlassian because of Jira, uh, and they think this is for agile development. And it is, but it's for many, many more things. We use Jira. Our IT team is, uses Jira all the time. It's how we keep track of what projects people are working on, who's working on what, what stage the project is at. It is very helpful for us. Uh, we also use Confluence, another Atlassian product that lets you document what happened, who's, you know, the workflows, uh, you know, this is a great way of keeping the knowledge base alive as, as employees come and go. IT, you're at the center. You can't fall short inside of business critical workflows. You need Atlassian, the company behind Jira. Software tools designed to manage complex collaboration and get the job done. It's not just for developers, though. I know people think that, but Atlassian offers an affordable, reliable suite of tools for teams of all kinds, all sizes, from DevOps to Agile to IT apps to Ops to ITSM and whatever's next. Atlassian has the technology to help modern IT organizations plan, service, and support the kind of change that powers the business. You got Jira software, you got Confluence. If you've got a code base, you need Bitbucket, the backbone of effective cross team project planning, organization, and communication. If you've got, uh, you know, need to manage incidents, you've got Ops Genie and Status Page. They'll help teams better detect incidents, coordinate response efforts to resolve issues faster. And as always, with communication, the centerpiece keeps stakeholders and customers updated and informed. This is the deal. With Atlassian, you can choose the tool that's right for today while trusting that as you grow, Atlassian will grow with you. And because it all integrates seamlessly, your team doesn't have to move from platform to platform to get the job done. I love Atlassian. I'm proud to say we're an Atlassian house. You should be too. Like all of Atlassian's products and tools you need for your IT team are easy to try and free to try. Just head to Atlassian.com slash IT and find out which Atlassian offering is right for your team today and tomorrow. Try Atlassian today to see what IT can be at Atlassian.com slash IT. Thank you, Atlassian, for supporting Windows Weekly. And thank you, Windows Weekly listener, for supporting us by using that special URL, Atlassian.com slash IT. Back we go to... Vucht. Vucht. <laughs> I'm not making fun of it. I'm trying to embrace and, and devour it. I, it's difficult. <laughs> Challenging. <laughs> when yep. we got here, we were in an Uber, and the driver turned to us and said, "We're at," and Paul and I just looked at each other, and he's like, "Are we where we're supposed to be?" Is this we're right? Like, I guess yes, you're here. You're here. I guess we're getting out of the car. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Either that, or he's having a, a fit. Um, he's like, right. You two are booked. Get out of the car. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, just in time for uh, Apple's event on Monday, uh, the news broke that the, well, first of all, that the FTC and the DOJ had split the world like Spain and Portugal. The FT, yep. the, the DOJ is going to investigate uh, Google. The FTC is going to take Facebook. Uh, and then Congress said, and by the way, Apple, we're going to call you and all the other tech giants in because we've got to investigate what's going on. Uh, this is, you know, a lot of observers have said it's just a matter of time before government gets interested in this and starts to do something about it. The tech lash. Kara Swisher had, I thought, a, a very good piece in today's New York Times saying, okay, you know, I've long called for guardrails on technology, but this, the last thing we want is these ill-informed government uh, uh, agents deciding you know what goes and what doesn't go and i kind of have to agree with her well anyway it makes me nervous uh, i yeah I, I i think there are uh first of all the the definition of monopoly needs to be adjusted for the modern age but the as far as 
the type of Microsoft remedies that occurred in Windows for product bundling. I mean, there are classic monopoly abuses that absolutely apply to these businesses. And I, I don't, you know, I think one of the big issues I had, well, I guess it was mostly the EU was, you know, the, the product design stuff is problematic, but looking at some business and saying, this is illegal. I, I, I think we're capable of doing that right now. Microsoft it's funny because they were the precursor to all this 20 years ago. Um, yeah, yeah. They're, they're a trailblazer. Are they, a trailblazer. Are they mentioned today? I mean, are they no longer? No. Cong Congress no. Isn't, isn't worried about Microsoft anymore. No. In a way, that's an insult. It well, kind somebody of is. Said, you know, so, so, for example, <laughs> someone on Twitter, I was saying, look, uh, Apple's App Store is a monopoly that needs to be stopped. I, I am not prescribing a remedy. I'm just saying, you know, the terms of that store are just, you know, they're wrong and they, they needs to be stopped. And someone said, well, by that logic, you know, you can make the same argument that the uh, Xbox store on the Xbox needs to be stopped, too. I said, yeah, there's, there's one big difference, though. You know, when you're, when you're doing business a certain way and you're really small, you can do whatever you want, you know, within the terms of the law, of course. Uh, but when you have a monopoly, when you're a humongous company, the rules change and you yeah. can't practice business the exact yeah. same way. Yeah. So to put this in perspective, uh, the Xbox One marketplace is uh, p potentially 30 million devices. Uh, the iOS app store is one billion devices. <laughs> these these things are not comparable. Right. They're both big in their own way, I guess. But I mean, uh, the the reason that Apple is coming under this scrutiny, well, is because they're almost absolutely illegal business practices. But it's it's the size of the business, it's the scope, it's the impact that they can have on the world. That's why they're coming under scrutiny. You have to wonder if Satya Nadella wasn't a little bit prescient. Uh, dodging this bullet by making sure that Microsoft plays nice with everybody. They don't. They don't look like a dominant yeah. monopoly. They're not trying to create an ecosystem play. They're trying to make the ecosystem everybody else. Yep. That's a they're, that they're turns out to be everybody. It, a, yeah, it turns out to be a brilliant strategy if if everybody's going to get regulated. Yeah. I don't know <laughs> if you put, had put this but, had time to put this in notes, but there's an Oracle story today, for example. You can almost yeah. make a wheel like. Here's the wheel of uh, Microsoft's former enemies. Like, who, who, what are the craziest companies that Microsoft could possibly partner with? Yeah. Spin the wheel. <laughs> yeah. Sony, oh, last sorry. week. All right, let's go. Red Hat. <laughs> yes, yeah, Sony oh, on games. <laughs> of course, Sony on games. You know, Oracle on databases. Of course, Oracle of course. on databases. <laughs> like, like, it, 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 it's crazy. It's, it, it is so I, I, not the I, I also don't think I don't think though that the reason they're not being regulated this time is because they're being nice. I think it's because they're not a monopoly anywhere. They're not a monopoly anywhere. Yeah, sure, sure. Like I, I think it's just because they're they're a strong cloud player. They're number two by most accounts. You know they have a they have eight hundred million Windows ten devices. They don't have a mobile presence. They have a strong database presence, but they're not like runaway dominant and abusing their power in any market right now. And I don't think it's just because they're being nice. I think it's also because they're kind of on a comeback yeah. loop. Yep. Well, you know what else it is? The, the world has completely changed. And so, again, we were just talking about that. Yes. Uh, the, the earlier role when Microsoft was personal computing. You go back in time to 2003 or 1995 or whatever year, Microsoft was 95% of personal computing. of uh, Everything... Right was funneled through Microsoft. One of the interesting yep. side effects of this new heterogeneous world is that Microsoft can be a bigger company today, but they're much more diverse. They play in many more markets and they're not the dominant force in any of them anymore. They're kind right. of a smaller exactly. player in these different markets. And um, yep. it's funny because we've talked about that being a healthy business and a good business compared to say something like uh, Apple with the iPhone where it's such a huge chunk of their business. If anything went wrong with that one thing, they're very uh, vulnerable to that kind of situation yeah. where Microsoft is not. Uh, but this this is the other side to it, right? This is not a company mm -hmm. that needs to be regulated. Um, whereas these other companies are running rampant, just like Microsoft was doing, you know, 15, 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, yeah, times change. Antitrust complaints change. <laughs> Well, remember, so um, uh, Amazon, one of the things uh, the U.S. government is investigating Amazon is that they can tie digital services to their prime subscription, which is about shipping physical right. goods. No other company can compete with that. It, it's right. it's literally product bundling, right? You know, uh, Google, obviously, uh, through the virtue of their uh, monopoly on Internet search and on advertising online, it has been able to, not illegally, but 
uh, just enter whatever market they want because they just generate so much money. They can compete with yep. legitimate players in things like uh, mobile platforms or um, uh, enterprise services, music services, whatever. It doesn't matter. There's, these things don't have to make money. Yeah. You know, they're right. just they're all just little funnels for ads. Yep. These companies need to be scrutinized. Well, Microsoft got theirs a couple decades yeah, ago, sure. right? And yeah. it affected their business practices right up until very recently where they felt they couldn't even bundle anything together because they might come under scrutiny again. Right. So, yeah, if, if this does happen, the problem with all these, though, you know, these antitrust cases and the regulation, it's so late, right? So, okay, say say um, the regulators do something about Google using search to monopolize other businesses. It won't matter, though, in a way, because they can find them. They can, you know, right. say they have to change their organizational structure or the way they do business. But the the damage has been done, basically. And they're yeah, they're I the agree. dominant player, and you know what I mean. Like it's it's like yeah, you're gonna get your slap on your wrist or pay the fine, but is it gonna change yeah. the business? No. So that's happening in the EU as well, right? So they came down on them right. for I think three different antitrust charges so far. One of them was mm -hmm. Android, and one of the things they're right. gonna do is something very Microsofty, which is have a ballot box yeah. essentially for browsers, search services, and maybe some other things. I don't remember the exact details, but yep. it's too late. <laughs> you know, it doesn't matter. Yeah. You could put a, you, you, do you want a Google search or do you want one of these other pieces of crap? You know, I think I'm going to take Google search is what the answer is right. going to be for most people, right? Um, the people who are not going to choose Google search already, we're already looking for those alternatives, you know? Uh, no one normal is like, oh, I think I'll go with DuckDuckGo today. Yeah. For some reason, <laughs> it's a cute name, you know? Yeah, yeah you're right. Yeah. I think you're right, by and large. I, that, that's, that's actually a huge problem. Unless they decide it was a to problem break them Microsoft. up, I mean, they could do this. They could tell Facebook, yeah, uh, sell Instagram, sell WhatsApp. They That's could tell right. Google, split off right. YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, whether this is the right thing to do, it would be. It could be pretty detrimental yeah. Yeah, yeah. to their business. Yeah, yeah I, so remember, you're right. They, they wanted to break up Microsoft back before the we, judge we and the case screwed up. Yeah. Right. And oh, some people now, yeah. well, but some people now think that would have made them even stronger if they had split their business up instead of remaining as a whole and then having Windows dominate all the other businesses. So three letters, you can't necessarily uh, three letters, A-T-T. -T. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. You know, so I uh, at the time of that breakup, the biggest business there might have been Windows and that company, if it was by itself, might not exist anymore. Or it would be significantly smaller and certainly wouldn't be powerful in any way. You know, the Office thing would have been interesting because that would have forced Office to be more cross-compatible. Uh, right. I think, though, date. wasn't, wasn't the, the talk not necessarily product lines, but like consumer, enterprise, I, don't, I, I forgot. I think it was Windows versus Office, really? wasn't it? Really? They wanted to split up Windows yeah, and Office. I think they wanted See, that would have been yeah. crazy. No, yeah. really Microsoft hard. argued there was this Chinese wall that the right. Office developers right. were not getting early access to Windows features, right. which every, you know, ha, ha, ha. You know, no one was walking across <laughs> the hall with a floppy disk, you know. There, I mean, there was uh, one argument that you'd increase the value by making three companies out of Microsoft. Each would eventually right. have the same yep. value as the original, and that so you'd triple the value to shareholders and pe everybody would be happy. Yep. Yeah, I mean, I, look, the 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 things that happened in the world would still have happened generally. It might have looked a little different, but the the push to mobile, web, and cloud, and all that would have happened. It was going to happen. You know, that this was, you know, whether whether that version of Microsoft could have competed more effectively is unclear but um when you make a point that it's hard to imagine what kind of regulation besides the slap in the wrist 50 euro million euro fine what, what kind of regulation right. you could well what, enforce i mean i guess you could yeah. put privacy regulators inside of these companies ombudsman as they did with microsoft I hate I hate to get into like remedies because it's just you know this, this it's so divisive. But well, but if you I, don't talk about the, remedies, you can't talk about whether the it's you know yeah. the investigation. No, I know, I know. If you I, don't I, have I, a remedy, but, there's no point investigating. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, for example, you mentioned uh, pulling uh, acquisitions away from companies. That's been talked about. There are legal precedents for that. That's absolutely possible. So that's one thing. I I think that you know I mentioned Amazon. You know, not allowing Amazon to 
let's say illegally, you know, um, take advantage of a market power, if not monopoly, they have in online uh, e-commerce to push their digital services, which is what Google is doing with advertising. Um, you know, maybe there's something there. You know, maybe mm. Apple, I, I look at the Apple thing and all I can think is Apple will fight tooth and nail to prevent the App Store from not being the only place you can get apps on iOS. So it seems like the fair resolution there, the one that they would agree to, would be a lessening of the commission fees and not having commission fees on subscription services over time, which is complete nonsense. I, I can't believe they get away with that now. Um, but you can kind of look at those things. But um, right now, I think the, the big news is simply the U.S. government somehow inexplicably <laughs> has woken up and is finally looking at this stuff belatedly. Um, Come I'm, on, Paul. I can't, it's I all about politics and an election in 2020. Don't you think, really? Yeah, I'll take it. Whatever. I, I, it, it's, <laughs> this is necessary. This, it's overdue. But, but it's – but. You, okay, you could put, as Kara Swisher said, guardrails. I don't whatever those right. would be around these companies. But are the are well, these are is Congress is the Department of Justice is the FTC is the FCC are these people competent? My my real no. fear is you've okay. got <laughs> is you've got a bunch of Ned Luds who are about to throw hammers into the looms and mm -hmm. break things. And uh, I don't know about you, but I feel like so, uh, technology is kind of the central nervous system of our economy. Here, you can't, here's what we you have can't to, pry it out without killing everything. I think we talked about this. You're watching Chernobyl, right? You're, I think we Isn't that awesome? You, what a great show. Okay. So here's one of the things that's really awesome about Chernobyl. And this is a healthy reminder, and you can draw comparisons to our current government in the United States. Um, in this failed system in the Soviet Union in the, in the mid to late 1980s, they were really smart people. They were really good at their jobs. And there were people who were willing to sacrifice themselves to for the greater good. They, they basically saved Western Europe from being destroyed by a nuclear yeah. holocaust yeah. Um, and died in, as a result. So here, in, here, here we are with this completely broken system um, and still some amazing, really good, smart things happened, you know, after some really dumb things happened, obviously. But um, I, I those should point out that the government. really dumb things – were bureaucrats mm. attempting yes. to well, weigh in on scientific matters. That was the problem. Yes. That's why yeah, it yeah. broke. Because mm. yeah. uh, well, and, and the whole this is this our system can't be wrong. So this very line of yeah. questioning is is something. At we're the not end going of the show, about. I hope it's not spoiling for anybody. Legasov says it wasn't the nuclear reactor that that exploded that caused the problem. It was the lies. Lies right. caused right. Chernobyl to fail. By the way, for, for people who uh, are depressed by the ending of this show, I will say season two is going to be a lot sunnier. Oh, my God, yeah. Uh, Chernobyl yeah. part two. Be, Incredible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The animals the come back. It's good. You'll love it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it is a uh, grim show, but it is so well made. And, you know, it's funny because I started watching it and I would read some reviews that were far from positive. And I thought, well, right. I'm kind of enjoying this. And uh, yeah. it's only five episodes. And, uh, right. I thought it was I really good, and now the ratings are out. It's like the number one show of all time, yeah. almost. Yeah. Oh wow, it's great. Yeah. Anyway, my point grim. is only that. Um, yeah. yeah, but in it, when you look at antitrust, or if you look at legal, the legal issues surrounding all this stuff, I mean, yeah, is is some guy from the House of Representatives going to be smart enough to do whatever? No, probably not. No, because they're protecting the wrong experts. thing. They're not thinking about <laughs> physics. They're thinking about money. You know, and okay, and, but, and and that's the problem. I know, but they still can't. They're ignoring I know, but they science. Still have to have, Okay, but they, there still have to be people who are whatever the scientists are. No, in this people world. are good. I think that was the message of this. People are good, but sometimes acting politically, they do really mm -hmm. dumb things. Yeah, probably more than sometimes. I'm just saying <laughs> that for antitrust, <laughs> there are some. You know, look, I, anyone who followed the Microsoft antitrust trial and um, the back and forth, the Jim Clarksdale stuff, which was amazing with Netscape, mm -hmm. uh, Jim Bowie's. And uh, all of the, you know, the Gates deposition and all that stuff, it's, it's fascinating. Like there are, um, there's a, getting this stuff just out into the public light is, is worth it. <laughs> you know, um, I think people need to understand what these companies are doing. I think we're kind of willfully ignorant of it. You know, it's like the whole Google equation. It's like, I know they're stealing my private data and selling it to advertisers, but they told me about a speed trap on the highway and I didn't get a ticket. And 
you know, it, it, it's, it's that weird thing we all kind of do. You know, we just sort of make that deal with the devil. Yep. Anyway, uh, it, 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 we'll be watching this for years to come. Remember how long it took to yep. prosecute Microsoft? Yeah, and, years, and, and years. And thank God they did well, you know, because they it made everything better, didn't it? Rome uh, wasn't built in a day, but Rome was also not destroyed in a day, as I, I like to say. <laughs> yes, and, uh, you know, Microsoft true. went down kicking and screaming, by right. the way. Um, so, yeah. And these companies, by the way, the one thing they have that Microsoft didn't have is the Microsoft example to fall back on. What happened then? What happened when Microsoft was belligerent? Um, you know, is, what, is it better to settle and get terms we can live with? Or do you want the government to enforce something stupid on us? Um, and so, you know, th they might make better decisions now, too. So, we, you know, let's see what happens. I trust our government, Leo. I think they're great. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even... It's such can't a say it with a can't even say that with a straight but, you know, face. It's funny. Yeah. I've never been, you know, Jerry Purnell used to always come on, the late great science fiction author would come on and say, you know, the one thing a bureaucrat's good at is keeping his job and making more jobs for himself. Uh, he was he was like the traditional kind of John Birch small government guy, uh, hated sure. government. And I always got in fights yeah. with him because government is the reflection of society. This is how society says this is how it wants things to happen. So I'm not anti-government. But, uh, boy, you have a very complex system here, and you have very blunt tools to deal with it. That's kind of what it looks like to me. You've got, you've got this elaborate well, watch, fix, and you're you know? going trying to fix it with a hammer. And That's right. Well, it, not a hammer. It's a, a homemade hammer from the Pleistocene age. I mean, it's, <laughs> it, you know, it's not even a nice hammer. It's something, you know, Throg made over there in his cave, you know. Yeah, it's, uh, hmm. Yep. So uh, let's talk more about Microsoft, shall we? <laughs> yes. Why not? After all, that's what that's what it people are like. Here. They're going to escape that particular problem. Mm. Yeah, you know, it really is interesting that they they really they're not being mentioned as a tech giant, you know, involved in I, any of these how, issues. How hard would you have to look to find a complaint against Microsoft right now? Pretty hard, right? No, it's, right. I mean, no. I mean, honestly, like what what. I'm, I'd love to hear some legitimate yeah. complaints. I think you could say now this is a very well-run company that is doing the right thing not only for its stakeholders but for its customers. Right. Except right. for that Windows Update issue. But other than that. Yeah, I know. Windows, <laughs> Windows is screwed. But everyone else is great. <laughs> <laughs> well, and again, they're not a monopolist in any field. Well, desktop operating Which systems, they're pretty close, aren't they? Still, 90%, 95%. I guess no one really talks about Windows desktops by themselves anymore, right? right. They talk oh, about the operating not, system it's share. Not, it's not relevant, <laughs> is it? Because you have so all that's these the Linux. Pro, right, that's exactly right. So in other words, it's not the gateway to anything. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah, know? yeah, they can't own right. it. Yeah. Isn't that and funny? You, you have to compare it to other things, too. Like when, when Microsoft Word is available in a sophisticated form on an iPad, yeah. You're kind of undercutting yeah. your whole argument yeah. against the Windows yeah. near Monopoly right. or whatever. No, clearly. Yep. Mm, let's see. Mm, let's talk about Windows since we're okay. talking about Windows. What? Why not? Windows <laughs> DSS. L <laughs> L DSS. Uh, Microsoft adds more Your App features. This is a sentence I had to parse four or five times. Microsoft adds more Your App features to the latest 20H1 Oops. build. I meant your phone, sorry. Oh, well, that helps. Okay. Your phone, that helps a little, right? Well, but I thought Your so, App might be a category, like of all these of new apps, oh. like the Your Apps. No. No. <laughs> There are no, no. Your apps. There are no um, your apps. Right. So <laughs> your phone is is this app that you can get now for Windows 10 and your Android or iOS device where things happening on your phone get mirrored on your PC. Um I've got it I've got it running on a bunch of my different devices now and it's kind of handy, I have to say. You don't have to stop doing something you're engaged in and say an instant message will pop up on your PC that actually is from your phone and you can answer it right on your PC instead of having to bring your phone out. Okay. Right. Cute, handy. Um, they're continuing to add more features to that because if you think about it, Microsoft doesn't have their own mobile operating system. So how do you stay relevant in the mobile market? 
you continue to allow people to use their mobile device, but from their PC. That's kind of their best chance at this point with yeah, that. I think that's good. Yeah. So now, um, as of this latest 20H1 Windows 10 build that came out last week, you can do more things with your, your phone app if you're an Android user. So you can send and receive MMS messages now. You can g send and receive images and GIFs from your phone app. Um, you get new badges saying how many unread messages you have and a visual indicator on the messages node showing if somebody's read messages or not. So they're letting you do all these more advanced things with your phone now on your PC, most all on Android because Apple's kind of blocking them from doing a lot of these things on iOS. Uh, but they, but these are all handy. Like your phone now can sync your over mobile data, not just Wi-Fi. Um, so, you know, if you're using LTE, you can now have the your phone app also still continue to work. And they're adding more mo uh, more more models of Android phones to the list of what's supported. So Samsung Galaxy A8 and A8 Plus are now added to the list. Um, there's a lot of Android phones that are on the list. Anything pretty much 7.0 or greater can work with your phone. Nice. So, yeah, nice. it's good. It's all goodness. Yeah. Uh, nothing it's... bad there. <laughs> nothing but goodness. <laughs> By nothing the way, I feel goodness. like, Mary Jo, you won the hotel room lottery. I'm looking at your room compared to Paul's room. You have Actually, a nice... I'm almost positive. <laughs> Nice paint. No, there, look, look, have, look. There's a nice painting, and it looks like Mary Jo got a window where Paul got an, an air conditioner. No, I got a window. Oh, okay. It's a, it's a different side. Um, oh, okay. I think our rooms are probably identical. Oh, all right. She has a better webcam. She definitely. Now, let <laughs> me sure. ask you that. Which brought, webcam are you using, yeah. Mary Jo? Which are you using? Yeah, I brought my usual Logitech cam with me. Ah, and Paul, right. you're using the built-in in Surface or something? And I'm, do I'm doing it uh, because my son needed a webcam. Aww. And I said, I, I, I will use the crappy built-in one for this Aww. one show, but then he's going to have to get a new one, you know. So I took the bullet good because dad. of my son. That is very nice of you. <laughs> and Paul, you know, if you need one, we could send one to you. I'd be glad to buy you a I, webcam. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Uncle Leo. <laughs> <laughs> actually, actually your, your audio is great, and, and I think, yeah. you know, I don't know what the audience share for uh, audio is on Windows Weekly, but typically it's, you know, 75, 80, 90 yeah, percent for most yeah, yeah. of our shows. So, if Well, for those who are not watching us, congratulations. It looks terrible. <laughs> it's not actually that bad. <laughs> One thing I have noticed is a little bit of latency. So I'm going to try to stay out of the conversation as much as I can. Cause I, oh, uh, sorry. And, of course, poor, poor Paul and Mary Jo, they're sitting, you know, in rooms feet away from each other, but their signal has to be sent all the way, I don't know where, to Redmond and back. Yeah. So there's yep. a little latency there too. Uh, let us let us continue on. I think we've we've mentioned that part of the show. How about Qualcomm? Now I don't know how that how this has to do with Windows 10, but there's a new Qualcomm yep. Snapdragon. Paul, so because yours? this chipset is for PCs, right? So oh. Oh. some sometime this fall, I, probably uh, these systems will be announced in September at IFA. The first PCs based on the Snapdragon 8 CX are going to come out, and these are the ones that promise Core i5 levels of performance. Yeah, so we've been talking about the 8 CX is like a big watershed. We're right? waiting and waiting. Yeah, yeah we're yeah. dying to see these things. So we'll see. Like, that's the claim. We'll see what they're really like, but that's what Qualcomm is saying. Um, as part of last week's Computech show, uh, uh, Don McGuire, who we know and we've met and I think we've had on the show, um, told another podcast that uh, Qualcomm is also working on a 7CX uh, chipset, which that name could change. But as the number uh, implies, uh, a lower-end chipset that is aimed at 300 to $800 PCs, whereas the 8CX is aimed at premium PCs that would be more expensive than that. So there's been no discussion about timing for this. I don't expect to see it this fall, but I guess you never know. There's been no discussion about uh, um you know, who, if anyone has decided to make these systems or, you know, uh, anything like that. But uh, they are advancing the platform for the low end as well. Because, you know, one of the gripes about ARM today on PCs is that these things have been kind of low performance, really good battery life. But most of the systems have been kind of expensive. And uh, the HCX will be the premium chipset. And then they'll have a, a lower end one as well at some point. Not So kind of interesting. Not Mac Pro expensive. 
No. No, no, no. <laughs> not, we're not optioning yeah, out yeah. a Ferrari. <laughs> not you know? Apple monitor stand <laughs> expensive. <laughs> but so uh, I, I told Mary Jo this story in the cab, but you know, the, I, I, my reaction to that is uh, complaining about a one hundred dollar monitor stand. One thousand. A, a system yeah. that cost yeah. uh, uh, one thousand. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, and a system that could cost us, you know, several thousand over ten thousand dollars, complete with the, you know, uh, system and the monitor, is like complaining about the three thousand dollar option package to get uh, aired seats. <laughs> in a Ferrari yeah. it's like you know <laughs> at this point what are we, you know yeah. what are we dicking around about it's like this thing is going to be it. stupid expensive anyway yeah. go for yeah. it yeah no but yeah. somebody uh, raised a really interesting point yesterday on MacBreak Weekly we were talking about this um, it was the creator of Peacock actually uh, and uh, he said as beautiful as that Mac Pro is as powerful as it is one has to wonder since it seems pretty clear Apple's going to move away from Intel towards ARM chips of its own design yep. is this really you know <laughs> there's there much of a future yeah, yeah for this yep. product oh actually so here's the deal um uh, for, uh, first of all that system is not aimed at creators it's aimed at ilm yeah and disney eight k filmmakers yeah 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 i mean this is no, no. this is the you can the first it. step uh of the mac being a workstation yeah right it, yeah, it's yeah. You know, the iPad becomes the mainstream system over that's time. What I, I think thought. that's yeah. why iPad OS exists. I yeah, think, that's I exactly think those what two I thought. Things together. That was yeah, my take that's away. what that tells yeah. me. Yeah. And of course, the iPad's already based on those ARM. Uh, in, in yeah. Arm yeah, chips. and I bet there'll be Macs based on that as well. I think you know, that's I, a, I, inevitable that the MacBook Air, for instance, the low end Macs are all going to go ARM. Yeah, but they can't do that for the workstation stuff for the for the you know high end creators, the people who are making the next Marvel superhero movie. Right. Um, you know, there's a PC for that or a Mac now for that. But uh, <laughs> there's a know. PC for that. <laughs> nice try, Paul. <laughs> well, the Mac's a PC, Leo. That's what people tell me. I've been waiting for, and I'm sure there'll be a, fl a slew of articles comparing comparable PC yeah. hardware to. Uh, I'm waiting for that too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> is there comparable PC hardware? I don't think there actually Not there really, is. Not really, right? Yet. No, and I think there's no, a, me a number of uh, technologies yeah. in there that will eventually make their way to the PC. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Uh, for now, Apple. No, I mean, it's a P I get it. It's a PC architecture, but is someone selling this computer? It's barely a PC so. architecture right. now. I mean, they have this new mm -hmm. fabric um, uh, interconnect, and there's all sorts of stuff they're putting in there. Uh, this is the type of stuff we used to see in supercomputers, right? right. That you would go to a Absolutely. educational institution, and they, yeah, well, I, it, it, this is a really strange kind of unless machine. you're running Chrome. There's no reason for 1.5 terabytes of RAM. I mean, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> that's a lot. Really. You're doing that that initial sync of Microsoft Outlook to the yeah. file. Maybe then. Maybe then. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, yep. there's a lot of interesting new technologies. They don't come from Apple. A lot of them uh, the, you know, come from Promise and, and uh, uh, AMD and other companies. So that's kind of interesting as well. It's uh, Apple's partnered with a lot of companies to make this thing. Um, let's see. Then there's Surface. Forget Andromeda. It's now... Mm -hmm. What was it? Chromacus? Centaurus. Centaurus. I don't know. I made up. Chromacus. <laughs> Some... Not Chromacus. <laughs> not Krejcik. Not like the Roman version of a Greek <laughs> I god. Made, I, mean, I made up some yeah. something that was vaguely godish, but not really. Like you the did. god that opened up his head try. and the kid came out. <laughs> but this isn't Andromeda, but it's, it's actually more like Courier, isn't it? Yeah. It's two screens. It is like Courier. And they, and they right, showed so it off. This is the weirdest part, right? So the Surface team is famous for keeping everything really quiet. They, they, they're they emulating Apple and other consumer electronics companies. They don't want to show anything before it's ready to roll, right? So, so a few days before WWDC opened up, they showed this off in an internal hands-on meeting. It wasn't the real device, I hear. It was very advanced renders of the device, but still, this is something the Surface team never does. And we've, he we've heard rumors about the Centaurus thing for about a year. And I kept thinking, oh, you know what? It's cool, but I, I bet they're never going to bring this thing to market. So now that yeah. they can showed offer, it internally. Can I have a theory about that, must, though? Like, why would, they, yeah. why would they show it internally? I think they're trying to yeah. change people's minds. I think anyone who hears this logically will say, yeah, that sounds cool, but it doesn't make any sense. I you think do? they're trying to get people that's excited about it. To yeah, I think they're trying to push it through. Yeah, oh yeah. I, I thought you meant they were trying to dissuade people by saying nobody could come up with a use case. No. 
<laughs> no, no. I think I think what when you put something like that in front of somebody, even if it's a render or a video, yeah. it makes it more real for them, and then they say, "Oh my God, yeah, yeah. we have to make that." I, I think yeah. it's it was an attempt to um, curry favor internally to make this thing happen. Yeah, it could be. The other weird part of the rumor about Centaurus is it's going to run Windows Lite. Um, yep. It needs the special shell that supports dual screen devices. That that shell is codenamed Santorini, and that shell is part of Windows Lite. So it would be very interesting if Microsoft brings to market a dual screen device that's running Windows Lite, which is their Chrome OS competitor. But again... I have to come back to saying who is it for and why. Yeah. Right? Like, oh, Mary it's cool. Jo, you're bringing it's, your logic to a knife fight. I'm a downer. I'm Debbie Downer. But listen, like, okay, here's this really cool thing that looks like the courier, which everybody used to be super excited about. But who is this thing for and what can it do that no other existing device type can do? Yeah, I have a cool, kind of off, uh, <laughs> out of the blue question. Did they show yeah. this? to in-house to people before or after the Galaxy Fold failed? Oh, after. That's a good point. So maybe what they're saying is, okay, people do want something that opens and unfolds, but clearly a single yep. screen solution is not the right thing. We happen to have in the lab At a least two not screen. Today. Yeah. yeah, we've got a two screen solution. What yep. do you think of this? Right. Yeah. It's supposed to be like, I, I've heard 12 to 13 inches um, so it's a lot bigger. It's not a phone size. It's thing. big. Yeah, no, it's no, not it's a phone. No, no, it's a laptop basically. Um, and also, there were a lot of kind of two-screen laptops at Computex. That's mm -hmm. true. A folding yep. uh, laptop introduced mm -hmm. by Lenovo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, um, they're showing it inside, which makes me think it's going to happen. Will it be ready this year? I'm not sure because Windows Lite we keep hearing is a 2020 thing. But what they could right. do, since we've heard there's an October hardware event, they could show this off in October and say coming early next year. They could do that. Yep. Hmm. Yeah, October would be the, the right time to do that. Yeah. I mean, again, though, I, I just keep coming back to who is this for – and will it make people carry this instead of another device? Would you carry this instead of a phone if it no, had LTE? No. It's, no. In, it's in lieu of a Would laptop. Would you carry this instead of a laptop? But, okay, but typing on glass, here we go again. It's for first-line workers. I know. That's what everybody's going to say, right? <laughs> but how expensive excuse is this thing For a crappy be? form factor. Well... First line workers yeah. don't care. <laughs> it's not for you. No. You wouldn't understand. You wouldn't get. You're it. not a first line worker. No. Yeah. But how expensive is it going to be? Two really nice. Well, maybe not so nice, but two glass screens, um, in a premium form factor surface device. Like, is that really for a first line worker? It's kind of hard to imagine that Microsoft really took this seriously. Maybe they just were showing it around. You know. I don't know. Well, they clearly have been going back and forth on this for a long time, yeah. right? This thing has evolved yeah. over time. It it it's never made it past a certain phase, which I think is interesting. Um, which is, I, it honestly, is kind of healthy and smart because uh, I know there are a yeah. lot of enthusiasts like, "Oh, it'd be so cool," you know. It's like, yeah, it'd be cool, but you know, lots of things are cool that don't make sense as a product. Um, yep. And my and I have to say, I I know Apple's design team has all sorts of prototypes. Uh, yeah. I, I got to figure the Surface team does the same thing. They 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 crank out all kinds of prototypes. Yep. Maybe what they were just saying yep. is, well, we can't decide. What do you think? Is this worth? Yeah, maybe. Is this worth pursuing? <laughs> they knew this was going to leak, though. Thing. If you yes, because you of the interest in Andromeda hands, and, and Courier, of course. Yeah. Which I think is yeah, why. If you show this in all hands, it's going to be it's going to get out, right? right. People so, are going to talk about it. So they're asking not just the people at the all hands, but all of us. Yeah. I don't, I don't think the service team has any question about whether they want to make it. I think really? they're they're trying to get past the rest of the company. Okay, the, Mary Jo's theory. You know, yeah. There's a, yeah, there's a senior leadership team there who's saying no to this thing, right? And uh, probably Ooh. very pragmatically. It's the old yeah. end around. Oh, yep. yeah. <laughs> leadership does not like that when you do that. That is never no. a good thing to do. That's not a good strategy if that's what's happening. Yeah. <laughs> 
some stories. Yeah. That's happened before at Microsoft too. Remember the eHome guys yeah, that kind of came up with their yeah. own logo, and went to CES with all their own stuff, oh, and Jim Alton was like, "Guys, <laughs> you don't exist." So you, you could put the logo politic. away. You yeah, can forget. yeah. They, so they just tried to. Yeah, don't. It do was that. like, look, if we get people excited about this stuff, we'll we'll, we'll be a thing. And he's like, "You're not a thing." Yeah. <laughs> this is, is this over. your first job? Yeah. Well, it's going to be your last. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's yep. dopey. I've never, yep. I've never known a boss who wouldn't go ballistic. Who, li who likes that kind of behavior? No it's one. It's what we call a no. rookie mistake. It's a rookie mistake. <laughs> yeah. 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 I can't think it was that. Maybe it was though. I, I hope it. Was. I don't know. Jeez. I, I think it. Well, I think it was. I really do. Yikes. I and mean, I think about the certain like Panos Panay, whoever, like assuming he was responsible. I mean, he certainly has the political clout to withstand this. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, you know, if they're like, you know, we don't appreciate what you did. Yeah, and then what are they going to fire Panos? Gonna get, no. no one's going to get rid of Panos, so. <laughs> Let's, uh, we got Xbox news. We got Microsoft news. Mm -hmm. We got more news. Yeah. We got back of the book stuff. But I need to take a little time out to mention our fine sponsor. My, the company that I uh, I blog on, My for I have been using WordPress as a platform, as a content management system since they started in the early 2000s. It was about 12, now 13, I guess, years ago that I started using WordPress.com. I realized something very important. As great as WordPress is, I didn't want to self-host. Not as it, not only is it more expensive, it's a lot more work. WordPress.com does all the work for you. They do the hosting. They run the software. They keep it up to date. They give you all the plugins. And they give you great support from real WordPress enthusiasts, actual experts, 24-7. Now, now, I shouldn't have to convince you, but I maybe you do need to be convinced that everybody needs a website. Everybody, every single human. At birth, if you ask me, a parent should create a website for their kid, or at least to reserve a domain name and a website, just so that as the child ages, maybe by the time the kid's in middle school or high school, they could start putting their own best stuff on the net. Because if you don't, you leave a vacuum for others, and you don't want to do that. I tell every teenager, I've done lectures at high school saying, to parents and teenagers saying, create a website. It's not enough to have a Snapchat or a Twitter or a Facebook feed. you got to have a website where you put your best stuff. The, the first thing people find when they search for your name. And there is no better way to do that than WordPress.com. You could start for free, but it's got room to grow. Uh, there are no two-week trials. There's no hidden fees. You, you get started right now. Go to WordPress.com slash Windows. If you do decide to upgrade, you'll get 15% off any new plan purchase. I have the full business plan because I, I love all the features, and I am using it, you know, kind of as a, as a quasi-business site. You can actually do e-commerce there. Uh, you can upload any type of content, text, images, video, even code, whatever it is that you want to share with the world, share your best stuff. And it is never trapped there. You own your own stuff because at any time you can also download it, move it if you want. You won't want to. I've been a WordPress customer for an awfully long time and I know it is the best place to create your website. Built to grow with you, to get you where you want to be tomorrow. The best site building tools, the best themes, the best support, that's WordPress.com. No wonder millions of people use WordPress.com every day to turn their dreams into reality. WordPress, the software, powers one-third of all the Internet worldwide. 33% of the Internet is powered by WordPress. Talk about a dominant platform. And that's good for you, too, because it means there's more support. There's more, there's more stuff you can do with it. It's just great. It's easy to use. It's fun. It'll make you want to post stuff. And that's the best thing in the world. Go to WordPress.com slash Windows. 15% off any new plan purchase. Frankly, I've replaced my social media with WordPress, but it's, it works great with social media. You can even have people link your WordPress site to their social media to share the good news about you. I love it. You will too. WordPress.com slash Windows. 15% off if you decide to buy a plan. 15% off WordPress.com slash Windows. We thank them for making LeoLaporte.com and Steve Gibson's web blog and on and on and on. And even some of the biggest websites like Fortune.com and Quartz. Are, they're all running on WordPress. There's a good reason for it. WordPress.com slash Windows. Thank you for supporting Windows Weekly by using that address. Oh, let's see. Even in the Netherlands, are you gonna? You'll be back in time for uh, E3 next week, of course. Yep, that's right. Are you gonna? Go, you're not gonna go though. 
No, because uh, yeah, E3, the Microsoft event is on Sunday. E3, I guess, is like Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Our, the event we're going to is Wednesday, Thursday. Is we stopped no way, going uh, to because it really, it mostly seems to be pre-announcing games. I mean, mm. Yeah, so uh, Sony is not participating. And Sony said year. they're not going to be there. Yeah, that's wild. Now, if you're a Microsoft fan, maybe that's not that big of a deal. I will say th some things to look out for at the show because Microsoft has gotten a lot of negative feedback when they've talked about hardware at E3, but I, I think we're going to see some xCloud stuff there. Yes. And I think we could yes. potentially see some next-gen Xbox One as well. Um, oh, and good. obviously there will be games. <laughs> you know, like yeah. that's, yeah, that's, that's, the, that's the real meat of E3. Yeah, I am very yeah, interested, yeah. though, in the xCloud. I really want to see what they're going to do with that. That is clearly the next big frontier. They have said, actually, they have literally said that they would talk about yeah. it at 8. And tomorrow, so we uh, we're going to stream it live at 9 a.m. Mm -hmm. Pacific, noon Eastern. Google's going to release right. more details about Stadia. They're going to kind of jump the gun on E3. Mm -hmm. So you've got Google Including streaming, the pricing. pricing, and games. Yeah. Yep. And that was a big, th both those things, pricing, games, and availability were all missing from the original Stadia announcement. That's right. Mm -hmm. yep. So um, that's big. Yeah, it'll but you be know what is yeah. even bigger than all of that, Leo, is the new line of Xbox deodorant, body spray, and shower gel. <sighs> Hallelujah. <laughs> uh, so you too, you too could smell like a Xbox gamer. without having to What does it smell like? Do you know? Basement. It's from Axe, um, right? I hope it doesn't smell like it's Axe. Gotta, it's got to smell like uh, flop sweat and... Um, <laughs> Tears. Uh, what, is camp, what does camping smell like? I don't know. It's, <laughs> Uh, no, I it, uh, I guess it's just a brand. It's a brand deal with Axe. It makes sense. A lot of gamers are bros. You know, they like the Axe stuff. Uh, I was so glad when my son grew out of his Axe habit. Sorry, Henry. Yeah. <laughs> One Christmas, I did Send give him an Axe gift set. Mm -hmm. I don't think he. That's ever, a low, huh? That is that was a That's low. A low. Point. <laughs> I don't, to his credit, I don't think he ever used any of it. I have to ask him. Yeah. Good, good. Um, <laughs> but uh, it, it's a natural kind of, you know, uh, tie-in. And yet at the same time, it does, just as you did, it bring, makes one think, oh, gamers, they are a stinky lot. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they need body spray. <laughs> I don't. I don't understand it. I, I'm confused by this. But. Yeah. Oh, I'm not. I mean, honestly, I remember going to, yeah. I think it was probably Walmart. And looking in the Axe aisle, because they have a whole aisle, and finding the gift oh, thing. Boy. I think if it had been Xbox branded, I might have even been more likely to pick it up for Henry. You know what's not a good thing? Old Axe. No. Old Axe. <laughs> <laughs> what is It doesn't uh, age well. Use If you've got any Axe, mm. use it or lose it. So is it, it's kind of like a nuclear thing, like yeah. it kind of breaks down over time. Down. And, yeah, it's like cesium. Yeah. It's, it's terrible. The problem is they made the cap out of celsium, and you know what <laughs> yeah, happens Yeah, that's that. right. They should never yeah. have used graphite in the cap. The graphite, yeah, the graphite <laughs> on the inside of the cap. It's yeah, touching the stuff. The... Old Spice is delicious. Yeah. I like Is Are you an Old Spice guy? <laughs> old Spice is delicious. <laughs> God. Yum. You know, the my uh, dog yeah. will also eat anything. <laughs> Lisa will know. not, to her credit, let me wear cologne. And I think that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. um, I would wear it if I if she would let me. I would wear it because I think, oh. in fact, somebody once said you should change your perfume or cologne every few years because scent is so tied to memory that mm -hmm. then you will have like a trigger for those couple of years. <laughs> Anytime you want to go back yep. to 1978, smell that smell that old spice. Oh boy, that brings back memories. Yikes! Yikes! What, what, that's the smell of 78. <laughs> uh, boy, what was that like? The, oh, uh, the gas crisis? What oh, were we looking at in 78? 74. 78 was, um, I don't know, that was Jimmy Carter's. Uh, sure. Jimmy Carter's high the American point. decline years. So it was yeah, good. Yeah. It was a good time. Iran held uh, hostages. Uh, hmm. Yeah, it was not a good, not a good time. Um, yeah. Smells like middle age spirit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. Uh, you know, I do want good. a purple Xbox One S, though. I would like that. It'll cost you 300 bucks, Leo. Is that in honor of uh, Prince? 
No, it's an honor. <laughs> Prince. No, Leo, it's an honor of something important. What? Fortnite. Fortnite's purple. No, <laughs> oh, so. yeah, I bet you're right. Prince would have been better. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, no, I agree, actually. Yeah, you know, put the whole Prince catalog on the hard drive. Uh, you'd have room for one yeah. more game, maybe. Um, yeah. yeah, it's a one terabyte Xbox One S. It's purple for Fortnite. It's a Fortnite special edition, so you get the Fortnite game in there as well. But Fortnite, of course, is free, whatever. But uh, $300, like every other Xbox One S. So. I do have, there is a product, Paul, you will be interested in. It's the mm -hmm. new Call of Duty hair and body wash deodorant. <laughs> and... Right. So ideally, Leo, that Apple what that would kit. smell like is nothing. So I can hide in a corner and <laughs> snipe you, sniper you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a, it's like a, a deceptive scent. It just smells <laughs> like the outside. I would buy the Xbox Purple Rain edition, but uh, <laughs> sure. no, this is it's got a llama on it. Um, and let's see, let's before we get to the back of the book, let's mention. The retail, Microsoft retail. Is new stores yeah. coming? Anybody? Yeah, <laughs> finally, finally, the London store that's been rumored for about four or five years is going to open on July 11th. This is another big Microsoft flagship store like the New York store and the Sydney store. Mm. And of course, all of this begs the question, why? Because if you've ever gone to the Microsoft New York store on Fifth Avenue, down a couple from Apple's Cube, which I guess isn't a Cube anymore, maybe? No, they're redoing uh, it. I don't know what it's going to look like. It's, yeah. still, it's still under construction. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's never a lot of shoppers in there. Uh, you go in, there's more, way more employees than there are shoppers. Yeah. You go up to the still, second level... Huh? Yeah, there's people, you know, it's a community space, too. So you see a lot of kids after school coming to take classes and play Xbox. And Microsoft uses it as a training center also and a place to showcase things like the new HoloLens for private demos. But that's going to be a very costly piece of real estate mm. for that. Mm -hmm. yep. So, yeah, they're going to do it in London now, too. <laughs> <laughs> just just in case you thought uh, Manhattan was too expensive, they mm. picked another really I expensive know. spot. Yeah, right down the street from Apple again, as typical. Um, I think that maybe they can give these up. I, oh yeah. well, they're not going to. <laughs> it doesn't yeah. look like. Mm, it's interesting. No. It what they are the giving question. up though are these. I know these little kiosks that they had for a while though in malls that were kind of like pop-up stores they have gotten rid of those we found out this week oh, all of those right. have been closed but there's still more than 70 full-fledged Microsoft stores in the US wow. and they're also in Canada and they're now coming to London wow. um, so yeah they're not giving up they're gonna keep going Wow. yeah hmm. I've had a lot of people formula say that it works. I've had, but you know what's sad about the pop-up stores? I kind of thought those were like, yeah, who cares? But a lot of people who are in various geographies in the U.S. said that was the only place I could go get Microsoft stuff right. or look at Microsoft stuff. Right. Yeah. Good luck looking way, at a bunch Seattle, of different Windows laptops. It was laptops. the only place you could go. Yeah. 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 So I'm not belittling it. Um, I'm just saying I don't think their store concept ever panned out anywhere near like the Apple Store, no, obviously, no. but. But sure. you kind of wonder, is it is it worth the money to them to keep doing it this? Must be, they, they seem to believe yeah, it is. It must be. I know. I yeah. do think there's something to be said. It's it's honestly, it's not for Microsoft as much as it is for the OEMs. There's something yeah. to be said for having a place a where you can see a bunch of OEM machines. Oh, and they're taken care of. You know, unlike at a, a Best Buy where often right. that place is a wasteland. Yeah, they're not fly-specked and smelling yeah. of high right. karate. Right. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, you're really pulling out the uh... <laughs> <laughs> or uh, English leather. <laughs> I'm gonna call it Axe Hi, Box. Is a good one. The <laughs> Axe Box. It's time for Axe. Actually, we have some Axe Box news in the back of the book coming up. <laughs> Plus the app of the week, the Enterprise Pick of the Week, and beer. Beer. Will it be a Dutch beer? Maybe. Could be from Vuk. Maybe. We'll see. Rogery, whatever how they pronounce that word. Yeah. yeah. I feel bad. I shouldn't make fun of it. I love the Netherlands. I think it's a great country. 
I love the people. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I think the language sounds beautiful, but we just, for some reason, have. Oh, but we're we're terrible. We just can't do it. It's we're us. idiots. It's not. Right. Yeah. It's just us. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think. Yeah. I mean, look. I'm sure English looks impenetrable to a non-English speaker, but Dutch I don't know, really. Like Leo, everyone here speaks perfect English too. <laughs> oh, I know. Well, no, <laughs> believe me, that's yeah. right. Uh, <laughs> they, yeah. There's no. There's no explaining humans. Our show today is brought to you by, that could really be the kind of the, the title of the whole network. There's no mm -hmm. explaining humans. That's why we prefer machines. There is no explaining why, well, I loved the story that Microsoft is uh, building into the new edge, building a Internet Explorer mode. And it's, you know, it's obvious why. It's why, it's why they kept bundling Internet Explorer with Windows 10. Because there are businesses all over the world still using software so antiquated that it requires Microsoft technologies long abandoned. Maybe you're, maybe that's your business. Maybe you're running, still running XP and IE8 because your special line of business software requires it. It was written by the boss's sister's son in uh, 1978 <laughs> or no maybe more a little like 1998 and uh the kid's gone long gone no one knows where he is no one knows how the code works but you still need it right we have a program like that running on azure here's the good news we've come a long way baby line of business software has gotten better and better yeah a lot of it still runs on prem but a lot of it runs in the cloud and there's software out there for every single business, modern, good software. Where do you find it? Captera.com. Captera is really a, a hugely valuable resource to anybody who's looking for business software. First of all, it's all there. Thou thousands of programs, 700 categories alone. Everything from you know the, the big things like CRM or IT project management or e-commerce uh, link management tools, web conferencing, but also special, specific line of business software, things like yoga studio management, dentist office management, things like that. Software that you can use and you might want. And here's it's the best part about Catera is not only can you find the software, you put the category, the, the particular business you want, you can then filter it based on ratings, on uh, capabilities, how many seats it supports, online, on-prem, all of that stuff. Narrow it down. You can make a comparison chart, look side by side. But the best part of Captera has to be nearly a million reviews by actual users. There's a thousand new reviews written every single day at Captera.com. It's because people really, really appreciate it. You know, when you find software that, that, that works for you, you go back, or doesn't, for that matter, you go back, you review it, you tell people, you spread the word, everybody helping everybody out. That's what Captera does so well. 900 plus thousand reviews uh, that are of, with actual users, vetted reviews. Captera makes it easy to discover the right solution for your business fast. Don't forget, you got to pay it forward. If you find something you like or don't like, make leave a review at Captera.com. Knowledge is power. Captera, oh, and I forgot to mention the best part, is free. Free. Forever. No, not freemium. Free. Captera.com slash Windows. Join the millions of people who have used Captera to find the right tools for their business. C-A-P-T-E-R-R-A dot com slash Windows. No cost, no charge. Uh, but if you would, please use that URL. Let them know you heard it here. Captera. Software selection simplified. Captera dot com slash windows what a great tool to have and speaking of tools paul therott has his <laughs> i am immature enough to tell you that i was just thinking of the same joke <laughs> his good good great minds and all his uh, tip of the week Mail minds, anyway yes um every year uh coincidental with e3 microsoft has its biggest sale of the year, which is actually kind of a dubious claim. They have other really big sales. Last year, you may recall, they rec referred to this as the biggest Xbox sale of the year. This year, it is the greatest Xbox deals of the year. All right. <laughs> but anyway, it is, a it is a really good sale. And it's at Xbox.com, Microsoft Store, and also select U.S. retailers. So what are you going to get? Uh, $50 off all Xbox One S digital and 
I'm sorry, digital, uh, console and uh, bundles. That's including that new purple uh, special edition Fortnite edition. So that's actually going to be $250. Uh, X, all Xbox One X is $100 off. Uh, games up to 75% off, including new games, PC games as well. Uh, controllers are all 10% off, including the Xbox Design Lab stuff where you can design your own controller. Really cool. Um, big savings on uh, gaming PCs. And then official gear, which is something... I just saw for the first time myself uh, back in, oh, it was like a month ago. It wasn't even that long ago. It seems like a million years ago. But whenever Build was in May, uh, they had all this Xbox gear for sale at the show. I thought that was really cool. There's some really neat stuff, you know, hat shirts, et cetera. Uh, that stuff is all up to 60% off as well. So take advantage of that. This next one, Xbox. this app of the yeah, week really is, cool. is interesting. Tell me about so this. Cool. So in 1993, uh, 26 years ago now, uh, id Software, uh, John Romero, um, John, oh, I just lost his Carmack. name in my head. Carmack. Thank you. It's, oof, the genius. <laughs> uh, and company released Doom, right? Not the first uh, third-person, sh uh, first-person shooter, but the, I think the one that kind of really oh, made the whole industry everything. take off. Yeah, 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 yeah. changed everything. The original Doom. I ordered Doom from them. I bought the shareware thing. Yep. I ordered, I sent yep. them a check in the mail, and they sent me a floppy disk in return. They and started freemium. Because it was yeah. free. The first level was free. Yep. And if you wanted this game, to play more, by the you way, had to buy it. Yeah, this game is still fun to play. So the original Doom, there were, I want to say, three episodes. Mm -hmm. uh, they created a fourth episode. Then they created Doom 2. Right. And then they created something called Final Doom. <laughs> you know, And so, um, and now it's 25, 26 years later. And so uh, John Romero, who has his own company, Romero Games, just created for free what he's uh, what's called a megawad, which is a it's essentially wads uh, are the file format for the Doom assets. W A D. -S. Yeah, it's okay. where, yeah where where's all the data is what that stands for. Oh, I didn't know that. So That's it, great. Yeah. I love it. yeah, so the the idea was we have a single file where all that data is yeah, found. Yeah, uh, he's created a new. Uh, it's a it's a megawad. Is it's an eight or nine level uh, package of ah. or levels right called Sigil. It's free. Anyone, you know, anyone can get just it. You to need give the you an idea of what how big these game assets were. It's a three megabyte file. Yes. yes. I, <laughs> I have textures so bigger than that. Yeah. Um, let me see if I can find these. Fi this is really interesting to me. So, like the Doom, the original Doom WAD file. Yeah. Is actually is twelve megabytes. Wow. Twelve, you know, megabytes, not gigabytes, Mega. right? Mega. Like megabytes. Yeah. That was the entire game, right? Yeah. That's like the entire game. When when Doom first came out, if I'm not mistaken. Um, there was no mouse anything. You, it was all keyboard. There was uh, you could kind of strafe and you could you could move forward and back. There was no looking around. There's no mouse look or anything like that. This stuff's all been added to the game. And so over time, like this game has actually been improved. And you so you can buy Doom today. You can get it from Steam. I'm sure. Yeah, we you should mention that the single wad is is worthless if you don't have Doom. Yeah, you have to have Doom. Yeah. So Doom will set you back a uh, pretty penny, uh, six dollars. Uh, <laughs> Wait a minute, it's <laughs> so, half off right now at Good Old Games, just <laughs> okay. three dollars. There you go. So grab that there. Uh, you can grab Do Doom Two if you want. Doom Two is available there as well. It's fantastic. Will Doom Two um, worth with the then, sigil? No, you need Doom One for okay. sigil, but you okay. might well, you might just want to play Doom Two. It's great. Um, <laughs> The other thing you're going to want to do, because it's 2019 and not 1993, is by there's a lot of software that will enhance Doom to make it look better and work better under Windows. The best one is something called GZ Doom. It's the new name for what used to be called Z Doom. And I got to tell you, this it looks great. Like this game looks great. It takes advantage of the full screen look on a widescreen PC. It does a lot of graphics improvements and smoothing and everything. And uh, it's just, it's, you know, it's not, look, it doesn't look like the new Call of Duty. I get that. But this game still plays well. It's still fun. It's it's neat. And uh, Sigil, I've only just sort of looked at it. I haven't really started playing it yet. But um, it looks, it's neat. It's just, you know, it's like, it's like one of the guys from the original team making what is essentially a new episode of Doom. I mean, come on, are you kidding me? Like, this is, it's amazing. It's just really, really cool. And if you want to support John Romero, he does also sell uh, physical versions of this that come with like a music CD. Uh, with Buckethead, you know, the guy used to be in, I think he was in Guns N' Roses and some other bands. And um, there's some various physical packages if you're into that kind of thing. But if you just want the game, it's absolutely free. And like Leo said, it's like a three megabyte download. It's hilarious. Yeah. Wow. Um, really, really cool. Yeah, this is neat stuff. Um, and then I just also should mention that Firefox, uh, Mozilla announced this week that all new users of Firefox will now see uh, tracking protection enabled by default. This is essentially turning off uh, support for third-party cookies. 
so sites can't track you across the internet. Um, and then starting sometime in the coming month, they're actually going to enable it for existing users as well. And of course, anyone who uses Firefox, like any other browser, can go in and make that change uh, now. But this is part of their big uh, privacy push, which I think is smart for them. So uh, that's kind of just a little differentiator. I don't believe this is tied to a new Firefox version. I think this is something that is flipped a switch. And, um, and now they're just doing this by default. So that's certainly pro-consumer. And you can support Firefox and Mozilla if you would like. Nice. <laughs> Mary Jo Foley. Mary Jo Foley. Uh, we're going to create a new um, segment on the show for Mary Jo called Skype Watch. <laughs> what the hell's new with Skype? Um, so this week on Twitter... Brad Sams, who we all know, the bunny wearer of the bunny suit, said, <laughs> "There he is." God. Said, "I I can't believe that, that, that Skype consumer <laughs> cannot federate with Teams." He was saying somebody using Skype consumer can't actually talk with people who are using what? Teams, and I thought that can't. What? I'm like, no, that can't be right. That, that sounds, cannot be right. Impossible. I looked it up, and it's true. And in fact, it was a feature Microsoft had promised and then canceled. Oh. But, of course, many users want this. I mean, if you're a business, you want you to it. have somebody who's a Skype consumer customer be able to, you know, talk with you, chat with you over Teams. Maybe they're not in your team, but they want to be a guest as part of your team. And so now Microsoft seems to have reconsidered and they are... Uh, they place this feature on the under consideration list um, with a little note saying, hopefully you'll hear more from us about this soon. Wink, wink. <laughs> so, of course, if you go to the link I have on that, many people are like, OK, that was in February. You said that. So are you doing it or aren't you doing it? Because if you're not doing it, I can't move my organization to teams. Yeah. So my guess is it's coming and hopefully fairly soon. Uh, but if you are one of those people you may not realize, uh, one of those people who wanted this feature, you may not realize it's back on the possible drawing now, board. So I just wanted this, to bring this, that up. It, <laughs> this functionality is in Skype for Business, right? You can communicate with Skype it is. consumer users. Correct. Yeah. So yep. It's, it's kind of goofy that it's not in Teams. Right. It is, especially because Microsoft now says Skype for Business and Teams are on parity feature-wise. But this is a pretty big feature not to be there for them to still make mm -hmm. that claim. Hmm. So yeah, so stay tuned. I think you're going to see Skype Consumer Federate with Teams sometime in the near future. Excellent. And weird that they took it out. I know. Yeah. Very That's weird. Really strange. Yep. Code name of the week. Yeah. So I don't know if this is a code name or what this is, but uh, I think it was about three years ago. Paul and a couple other people heard about something called Skype for Life. Do you Sorry. remember that, Paul? <laughs> yeah. Yep. So now there's this thing called Teams for Life. Um, <laughs> Tom Warren at The Verge says that during this all-hands meeting where they showed Centaurus, the dual-screen laptop, they also showed people this thing called Teams for Life. And the way he described it, it sounds like Teams for Consumers. So if you're, at, like, say, in a family, you would be able to use Teams with other people in your family to share calendars and documents and things. Not sure how much that really has legs, but um, I'm not surprised if Microsoft is doing this because, as we know, they're trying to figure out what to put in something for consumers that they call Microsoft 365 for consumers, just like the Microsoft 365 for business subscription. So my guess is this Teams for Life thing is them possibly trying to do a version of Teams for families and or prosumer slash consumers. Um, I haven't heard about it myself, but it I'm just going to say it sounds very plausible because I know they're grappling with what to put in the Microsoft 365 for consumer subscription. And that's why we haven't heard about it. Teams for life. Team. Would you use Teams at home? Like, no. It's like a life no. sentence. It's like a punishment. Yeah. You're, you're getting <laughs> Teams, teams for you life, You got Teams kid. life. You got yeah. life, I kid. I, I don't know. I can't see, like, saying to my family members, like my sisters, hey, let's all get on Teams and chat about blah, Yikes. blah, blah. Yikes. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, boy. Let's have a beer. Yeah. 
Let's have a so beer. I was looking for a, a Netherlands beer to pick, and there are so many good craft beers here in in the Netherlands. But I picked one I haven't yet tried because we just got here a few hours ago. Uh, but I would like to try this one. It's called Oedipus's Brewing. Oedipus Brewing Offline oh, White I Ale. I like that it's called Offline. <laughs> I love the idea the name. is, you know, you're kicking back. You know, you don't want to be online. You want to drink a beer. And this is a very light, uh, wit beer, like a white ale type beer. Sounds good. And Oedipus Brewing is based in Amsterdam. They're a craft brewery there. So I, I would like to seek this out and try it myself. Nice. Nice. All right, kids. I think Woo, we, have we made it. Gotten through the entire show. The sun is yeah. still up in the low country. It is. Yep. So there's this two megabit connection that we're stuck on. <laughs> it's holding. It held the whole time, which nice. is pretty amazing. Fantastic. Yes, yeah, that's true. Paul Thorat, Mary Jo Foley, have a wonderful time in oh, and come, thank you. come back in one piece. Excuse me, sir. <laughs> oh, I see. Yes, thank you. And we will see you. I'm sorry again. I love Holland. I do. Everybody rides bicycles. What could be wrong with that? Yeah. They're bicycles. I, I love it. Uh, there, I think somebody told me there are more bicycles per capita. There are more bicycles in Amsterdam than there, there are people. Mm. Yeah, that's true. Uh, but this is also the flattest place on earth. That's why. It's easy. Yeah, not, not to they have there, bike paths you know. everywhere, but no, but they also have bike paths and people ride them to work. It's yeah. just great. I love yeah, it. Yeah, no, it's neat. It's a good reason to like it. Thank you uh, so much. Paul Thorat is at Thorat.com, T-H-U-R-R-O-T-T.com. That's his blog. Of course, uh, his books are at LeanPub.com, including the Field Guide to Windows 10, updated now for 1903 or are soon to be updated for 1903. That's part of the deal. You get that automatically. Mary Jo Foley is at her blog at ZDNet. Easy to find all about Microsoft.com. Together, uh, they gather each Wednesday around 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1700 UTC, to do this show. If you want to watch us do it live, please tune in at that time by going to twit.tv slash live. You can also uh, listen if you want to watch or listen. You get your choice. And if you're doing that, participate with our fun chatters. They're all watching and listening live as well at irc.twit.tv. Uh, everybody else can get it on demand at twit.tv slash ww or subscribe in your favorite podcast application, and that way you'll get it automatically the minute it's available later in the day Wednesday. Cool. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Mary Jo. Have fun. Are you going to head out or are you going to go to bed? <sighs> We're going to head out to the bar. That's what I thought. I yeah. Don't, I, don't, I don't know that, you know... I guess we need to try we... to stay awake a little longer. <laughs> yeah, I think. it's not it's not late <laughs> enough yet. Yeah. No. Yeah. All right, it's not guys. Dark <laughs> it's not drunk yeah. enough. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you next time on Windows Weekly. Bye bye.